Hello, uh, welcome to Sweden. It's a bright sunny day. I got the balcony door open behind me. It's kind of hot today. Uh, pull down the curtains. It's super, super sunny today. And I'm here with you. We're going to go back to a channel that we haven't visited for a very long time. And that is Geography Now. And this might be one of the longest videos that we ever seen. Well, at least me have ever seen on the channel Geography Now. It's about United States of America. And I guess that's, that's a big country, so you need an hour to do so. However, I'm going to divide it in part one and part two. So two 30-minute videos. I think that's a good deal. I know, uh, to keep things interesting, you know, maybe I'll leave with a cliffhanger. I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you do enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. Uh, as per usual, we say thank you so much to the awesome people of Recce, the channel members, and the Patreons. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And big shout out to the Supreme Tier donators over by Patreon and channel membership. You guys rock. Thank you. Personal shout outs to the ultimate supporters Deja, Walt, Roni, Dwayne, Tammy, Kevin, Dana, and Troy. Thank you. If you want to join them, click join to become a member and or check out the awesome link. It's pinned on top of all the comments. Now it's time for geography now, and I look like I have been dead for about 30 years. I look very pale. Is, am I really pale? Yeah, I look hot. Let's do this. Oh, another rendition of the, uh, the Star Spangled Banner. Very beautiful. Amazing intro. I gotta say, amazing intro. <sighs> Home. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. By the way, you can get Geography Now merch like this Geography Now shirt at geographynow.com. Not selling out if it's your brand. So we did the UAE, the UK, and now the last of the United Triplet countries. After doing this channel for nearly a decade of my life, it's finally time. We have made it to my home country. Let's make this a big one. Here we go. Welcome to the United States of America. America. You gotta say it. Welcome to the United States of America.
The USA is a very complex place when it comes to the way that it's structured and the way that the domain administers itself. It's almost like 50 mini countries and five territories with their own unique identities, yet they all speak the same language and have some common understanding of American life. Everything is bigger, wider, spread out. We love shopping and having everything conveniently available now. I mean, that's why we invented things like fast food, the parking lot, the modern shopping mall, highway service plazas, drive-throughs, the barcode pricing system, credit cards, escalators, and public restrooms are everywhere and they're free. In any case, apart from that little civil structure overview, let's look at the map and discuss the actual location and sovereignty of the USA, shall we? First of all, the USA is located on the North American continent with the main chunk of the country known as the lower 48, where 98% of the population lives, is sandwiched between the Atlantic oh. and Pacific Oceans to the east and west, and Canada and Mexico border them on the north and south. The country consists of 50 states divided into 3,143 counties or county equivalents, 3,240 if you include territory divisions. Three states have weird detached exclaves on the Canadian border. They are the Northwest Angle and Elm Point for Minnesota, Point Roberts, Washington, and Alberg, Vermont. The only state distinctly divided into two continental land-based... What is that thumping noise? Is, is, is it the video or is it me? units is Michigan with the upper and lower peninsulas. The capital of the country is Washington, D.C., which is a federal district not belonging to any state and is under direct control of Congress, despite having a higher population than some states. In addition, the USA has five major unincorporated territories. They are Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, American Samoa, Guam, and the Northern Mariana Islands. In addition, there oh, are damn. nine minor outlying islands, all of which are also unincorporated, except for Palmyra Atoll for some reason, even though all these islands have no permanent population. The U.S. has a disputed claim over two small sandbank islands in the Caribbean as well, both administered by Colombia. They are the Serenia Bank and the Bajo Nuevo Bank as well. That being said, this means if you include all the territories and dependency, the USA has a total of 11 time zones, although only nine of them are used by people. Two strange time zone anomalies exist, the first one being the Little and Big Diomede Islands between Alaska and Russia, and American Samoa and Samoa. The Diomedes are less than three miles away and are visible to each other, yet they straddle the international dateline and are hence an entire day apart from each other. In addition, there are 325 Native American reservations spread throughout the lower 48. These areas, although under U.S. federal... 325 Native American reservations. I have no clue that there, that was... That's a high number, and I like that. Federal territory have a degree of autonomy for the native tribes oh. that administer them. The largest cities in the USA, population-wise, are New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago. The busiest airports, however, are Atlanta, Hartsfield, Jackson, Dallas, Fort Worth, and Denver International. The U.S. has an incredibly wide network of roads and highways connecting all states except Hawaii, obviously. The longest one being U.S. Route 20. Although the U.S. does have a relatively wide rail network for freight trains, passenger train lines have decreased over the years in favor of road transport, and today, the only long-distance inner-city network is operated by Amtrak. Our largest shipping port is the Port of Los Angeles in conjunction with the Port of Long Beach, which are two separate entities yet physically joined. Finally, one last thing. Although the USA has no claim over Antarctica, we do have the largest Antarctic station at McMurdo, which can facilitate up to 1,000 people. And we also Whoa. have the only station located on the geographic South Pole at Edmonton Scott Station. And in case if you were wondering, it follows the plus 12 UTC time zone. Fun fact, did you know that in Hawaii, it's actually illegal to laugh loudly so you kind of have to keep it at a low ha <laughs> few side notes. One, I made a video explaining the Native American reservations and statistical areas as well as territories of the USA. I figured they deserve their own videos because it's a big topic. Check them out. Two, each state and territory has their own flag, license plate design, and nickname. For example, the state I was born in, Minnesota, is the land of 10,000 lakes. Indiana, I still have no idea what a Hoosier is, but you do you. Cities have nicknames too, like Chicago is Chi Town or the Windy City. New York, the Big Apple. Orlando, the Big Orange. Seattle is the Emerald City and so oh. on. Three, yes, the USA is a car country. It's part of our culture. See, the majority of our country was built post-industrial revolution, so many of our cities have easily navigable straight grid-like road networks with accommodating wider roads as opposed to the spider web of narrow medieval cobblestone alleys built for pedestrians. In the US, you can get your own license at age 16. For yeah. many of us, it's a rite of passage and bragging right in high school to show off your car, even if you're just borrowing mom's minivan. Four, we also kind of have an awkward situation with Guantanamo Bay, which is located in Cuba, it's kind of like this. I am the first president of Cuba. Now that we are independent from the US, I will offer you a perpetual lease to Guantanamo Bay. Awesome, we'll pay you guys every year. We are the new Cuba, we don't want you, get out. 
Hey, your old president agreed a perpetual lease to us until both countries agree or we abandon the property. We don't want to do that. We're going to stay here. Well, uh, yeah, revolution. We don't recognize that treaty. Well, we do. Here's your lease check for the year. Thanks for doing business. I'll shake myself. We'll see you next year, okay? What? There was a small text? Uh, I want to see what it says. Hold on. There you go. We abandoned the property. We don't want to do that. We're going to stay here. Well, uh, yeah, revolution. We don't recognize that treaty. Well, we do. Here's your lease check for the year. Thanks for... To, uh, to this day, Cuba refuses to cash these checks. Wow. We're doing business. I'll shake myself. We'll see you next year, okay? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. At one point, the USA took administrative control over Cuba after the Spanish-American War, in addition to Guam, Puerto Rico, and the Philippines. Of course, the Philippines and Cuba gained their own independence. And the US also used to control the Panama Canal Zone for about 70 years. It was like, all right, Panama, you're getting your independence from us. Woo! Me gusta! But I agreed to let the Americans have sovereignty over the Canal Zone because, you know, they're, they're kind of building it. What the? I mean, uh, you want us to leave and take all of our money and you finish building it, or? Uh. For now, no, but let's talk in 70 years. Oh, okay, <laughs> then. Yeah. In addition, after World War II, we took administrative control over many of the islands in the Pacific that Japan used to control. The three Micronesian island groups of Palau, the Marshall Islands, and the Federated States of Micronesia were labeled as U.S. Trust Territories. And wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Federated States of Micronesia. Is this still? Is this still under... Uh controlled by United States. I don't understand. I, I guess go back for a bit. Let's talk in 70 years. Okay then. Yeah. In addition, after World War II, we took administrative control over many of the islands in the Pacific that Japan used to control. The three Micronesian island groups of Palau, the Marshall Islands, and the Federated States of Micronesia were labeled as U.S. Trust Territories until they gained independence in 1986. Today, they oh, are the only okay. countries that have the Compact of Free Association status, meaning the U.S. provides defense, financial assistance, and social services to the countries, whereas the citizens are allowed to move, live, and work in the U.S. and easily obtain citizenship if they desire, and in return, they allow the cool. U.S. to have military bases. In any case, every section of the United States has a unique story on how it eventually became part of the country. It basically goes like this. For example, the USA started as 13 British colonies that pretty much operated everything east of the Mississippi River. At one point, everything up to what is now Minnesota was just called Virginia. In 1803, we obtained the Louisiana Purchase from France, which didn't even have a properly defined western border. It just kind of arbitrarily ended at the Rockies. This doubled the size of the country, and a bunch of Acadian French-speaking criminals from Canada suddenly became American. In 1819, we expanded to the Pacific for the first time and had a shared condominium with the British in Oregon Territory. Two years later, Florida was ceded to us from Spain in a treaty in which we said that we would cede any claims to Texas. Well, long story incredibly short, the Texans in Texas kind of fought Mexico and became their own country for 10 years and then decided to cede their country back to the USA. In 1848, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo ended the Mexican-American War and the Alta California area was ceded to the USA. And after some quick borderline readjustments, and new states popping up, the continuous USA was complete. The Guano Islands Act started in the 1850s, got us to claim a bunch of random small islands in the Pacific and the Caribbean. Guano. Civil War split us up for about 10 years, but then we reunited. Meanwhile, Alaska was purchased by Russia. 1898, Hawaii was annexed from the Kingdom of Hawaii. One year later, after the Spanish... Gotta, gotta like that, that uh, Alaska was bought. Like, we want that. Can we can we buy it? And, and Russia said, yeah, sure. It's yours. That, isn't that kind of cool? American War, a bunch of new islands joined, but only Puerto Rico and Guam would stay as territories. One year later, Samoa was taken over under the Tripartite Convention. Later, only what is now American Samoa would vote to remain. And finally, in 1917, we bought the Virgin Islands from Denmark. Yeah, almost every American has played the Oregon Trail in school and has died of dysentery. Just want to give a huge thanks to <laughs> Bright Trip for making that animation. You guys are awesome. Check out their websites. They got some cool stuff. Hey, <laughs> we tried to buy Greenland like three times and they kept saying no, but like, come on, Greenland. Come on. On that note, you can kind of tell the story behind places in the USA based off of the language the name comes from. For example, many places in the middle of the USA that used to be part of the Louisiana Purchase have French names like Lafayette, Des Moines, or Des Moines. Hell, the entirety of Louisiana was named after King Louis the 16th, 14th, whatever, we're not French anymore. Places that used to belong to Spain and later Mexico have Spanish names like Puerto Rico, San Diego, and yes, even the city I live in, Los Angeles, Los Angeles. Otherwise, many cities and half of all the 
states are named after Native American words and or anglicized versions of Native American words. Kentucky, Ohio, Oklahoma. The city of Chicago means wild onion in the... I didn't know that. Oh, well, in some sense, I understood why, like, the Southern have Spanish clinging or ding-donging name. It's kind of... I don't, I don't know what I'm um, saying that, but but the Native American side on the West, if I'm not completely mistaken, that's, that's, did you know this? <laughs> the Miami, Illinois tribe language. In any case, basically our country was born out of revolution. Long story short, we were a colony of Great Britain, not the UK yet, but Great Britain, for about 170 years until King George III came in and went back crazy or at least that's how we see it you know the brits are more like you ungrateful colonials we declared independence in 1776 which by the way thank you morocco for being the first country in the world to recognize us as a nation in 1777 hey i beat them to it in 1776 hey you don't get to speak for me as a nation as a whole you will recognize them when i say so okay now you god damn why are it so loud i'm sorry if you're Freaking headphones just fell off and exploded. Them. However, the fighting went on for seven more years until the Treaty of Paris was signed in which Britain officially recognized us as a nation. Meanwhile, Canada just up north was like, <laughs> Now I'm daddy's favorite. But then like 80 years later, it was like, Ugh, I'm still dad's favorite. In any case, with the exception of a few other political entities, up until then, most of the world had been ruled either by monarchs or some kind of singular figurehead with huge authority that all administration pointed towards. The U.S. Founding Fathers developed a system of mixing elements of English common law, enlightenment philosophy, classic republicanism from ancient Greece and Rome, federalism, and separation of power. Basically, because we were so traumatized by the monarchial rule, we wanted to make a country ruled by a system that would make it really hard for the government to have too much power. In addition, we decided to become a federation, as in states share a singular sovereignty and must abide by the same federal constitution and the rights that it gives, like freedom of speech and press. But aside from that, they have the right to operate autonomously based on whatever regional values that each state holds and votes on. This is why sometimes people have to cross state lines to do things that might otherwise be illegal in the states they live in. Important to note, not everything was perfect in the beginning legislatively. Of course, we still had a long way to go and many things to fix. For example, slavery was still practiced and it did have legal provisions, women were not able to vote, and so on. But for what it's worth, the USA was the first nation state founded on enlightened principles of unalienable natural rights, consent of the governed, and liberal democracy. So yeah. America! In any case, history is boring. Let's look at some pretty pictures and whatnot. Let's discuss the famous places of the United States and I will do it! Now, we all know about the most publicized landmarks like the Statue of Liberty, Las Vegas, the Empire State Building, Times Square, the Golden Gate Bridge, Mount Rushmore, Grand Canyon, Lincoln Memorial, Niagara Falls, the Hollywood Sign, Gateway Arch, and Disney World, the largest amusement park in the world. We have 130 national monuments and 24 UNESCO heritage sites. Yeah, 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 we get it. But let's talk about some of the more underrated places that are just as equally yeah, as fascinating like as their that. over-publicized counterparts. Instead of New York, try Chicago. Instead of the Statue of Liberty, maybe check out the birth of the New World, or the Dignity Statue in South oh Dakota. My Instead God. of Mount Rushmore, try the Crazy Horse Monument. Instead of the Grand Canyon, try Arches National Park, Vermilion Cliffs, Devil's Tower, and my favorite spot, Monument Valley. Instead of Disney World, try Six Flags Magic Mountain. Instead of the Golden Gate Bridge, try the Chesapeake Bay, or Sunshine Skyway, or the Mackinac Bridges, or the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway in Louisiana, the longest continuous bridge in the world. For history, yes, we have history. I'm talking about ancient pre-colonial. Go to the Cahokia Mounds, Poverty Point, Earthworks, Hoven Weep, Tonto, Chimney Rock, Navajo National Monument, or the Pueblos of Mesa Verde, Taos, or the Chaco Culture National Historical Park, Aztec Ruins, Petroglyph National Monument, Montezuma Castle, so many things. We have the tallest trees and the tallest tree in the world, the Sailing Stones of Death Valley. In Hawaii, you can literally see act- What? 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 Oh my god, it's too fast, I hate that. What about the stone? What's going on with the stone? Bridge in the world. For history, yes, we have history. I'm talking about ancient pre-colonial. Go to the Cahokia Mounds, Poverty Point Earthworks, Hoven Weep, Tonto, Chimney Rock, Navajo National Monument, or the Pueblos of Mesa Verde, Taos, or the Chaco Culture National Historical Park, Aztec Ruins, Petroglyph National Monument, Montezuma Castle, so many things. We have the tallest trees and the tallest trees. Oh man, did I miss that again? In the world, the Sailing Stones of Death. I read, I read about, I'm sorry, I got completely uh, focused. I read about Death Valley. 
And that is that freaking stone moving by itself? Is it? Is it melting? Death Valley in Hawaii, you can literally see active lava spewing rocks or the world's largest protected marine area at Papahanao Mokuakea. Also, they have the Polynesian Culture Center and one of our best kept secrets, White Sands National Park that looks like you're walking on the moon. Go to the underrated states like West Virginia. They have River Gorge. North Dakota has the strange enchanted highway. The New England states have the oh. best autumn trees. Oregon has the ghost forest. Wisconsin has so many weird whimsical attractions. My favorite one being the House on the Rock. Idaho, Montana, Eastern California, Nevada, and Alaska have some of the best preserved western style ghost towns. Freaking Alaska! Ice caves, fjords, tundras, probably some of the best nature in the entire country. American Samoa and Guam and the Marianas are a wonderful place to see Micronesian and Polynesian culture displays. The Virgin Islands are like the wedding honeymoon capital of our country. God, there's so much and that's not even the beginning. This is one of the reasons why like only 56% of Americans own passports. Because we kind of have a lot to see in our own backyard. And this is what we talked about many, many times before when it comes to why Americans only 56%. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that number. Leave the United States when they go on holidays. I understand. Why would you? You have everything you need. And I understand that. And I hate that. And it's no wonder, considering that our backyard is one of the most biodiverse in the world. Let's discuss more of that in... Now, to summarize every conceivable landscape you can think of, we have. The USA is regarded as one of the most geographically diverse nations on Earth, and with that landscape spectrum, you can find an infinite amount of natural wonders. But first... Let's look at the map. So first, let's start with the lower 48. Generally speaking, there are seven main physical regions. The coastal plains extending from the North Atlantic states to the Gulf of Mexico, split off by the Appalachian Mountains. From there, you have the Central Plains and the Great Lakes region east of the Mississippi River, Lake Superior being the largest lake and the largest freshwater lake by surface area in the world, third largest by volume. However, only about 45% of it belongs to the U.S., meaning the largest lake completely within the U.S. boundaries and largest lake by area in the world full within a single country would actually be Lake Michigan. Altogether, these five lakes make up about one-fifth of the world's above-surface freshwater. West of the Mississippi, you have the Great Plains, the flattest part of the country, and home to Tornado Alley, where the strongest and most tornadoes form than anywhere else on well, Earth. Know that. From there, you reach the Rocky Mountains, the U.S.'s longest chain and third longest in the world after the Andes and the Great Escarpment in South Africa. The Rockies are also the source of the longest river in the United States, not the famous Mississippi, which begins in Minnesota, but by one one mile extra, the Missouri River actually beats them at 3,341 miles. Past the Rockies is the Great Basin, which holds the U.S.'s desert ecoregions, eight cold deserts with alpine flora, and three dry, hot, shrubland, rocky, sandy deserts. Fun fact, the Sonoran Desert shared with Mexico is the only place in the world oh, where right. you can find the famous saguaro cacti. You've probably seen them in movies and TV shows. They grow yeah. here naturally. From there, the other side of the Great Basin is bordered by the coastal ranges, a.k.a. the Cascades and the Sierra Nevada. Keep in mind, this range also sits on the San Andreas transform fault line, which is part of the larger Ring of Fire. That means this area is the most earthquake-prone region in the country, with lots of geothermal activity, such as the eruption of Mount St. Helens in the 80s. From there, the state of Alaska up north actually has the highest peak, Denali, as well as all oh. of the top 10 high- I didn't know Denali was in Alaska. Oh, mind blown. Mind blown. peaks in the country as well. Otherwise, Whoa. unlike the islands formed by the Ring of Fire, the Hawaiian Islands were not formed by a fault line or rift system, but rather by their own unusual isolated hotspot where magma spurred out on its own through plumes in the middle of the ocean. This is also known as the Emperor Hawaiian Seamount Chain. And technically, if you consider height from the base of the mountain to the peak, Mauna Kea on Hawaii's Big Island could be seen as the tallest mountain in the world, as over 25,000 feet or 75% of its total elevation goes underwater to the seafloor. Yeah, what the Midwest lacks in landscape, they make up for in skyscape. We have the craziest atmospheric conditions in the Great uh, Supercells. People from all over the world come to our country just to see tornadoes. It's a thing, tornado tourism. Oh, and fun fact, many homes, schools, and businesses in the Midwest and Great Plains have tornado shelters and cellars. And in schools, the kids also practice tornado drills. I had to do that as a kid. And in that regard, some students in the West Coast have to do like earthquake drills. We know how to handle natural disasters here. We're pretty good at it. In the USA, life is like a constant economic economic game of opportunistic chess moves mixed with skill and luck. We know our potential and we want more. That's why we never stop moving. We hate mediocre, mundane complacency. You could win it all or you could mess up and lose it all. But the point is, 
you could. We go crazy over that word. Not every country in the world offers a could to their people. We aren't really afraid of failure or embarrassment. That stuff passes away easily. Hell, we even capitalize and make money off of our embarrassment. Have you seen our reality shows? But the one thing we are terrified of is regret. And that's the core of the American spirit. An American doesn't wonder, we dream. Whether it's plausible or deluded and foolish, we dream. Anyway, that was kind of a ramble. Not gonna get too far into it. In any case, it's time for my triple shot espresso break. Let's bring Noah in to fill in for the... Yeah. I, <clears throat> you guys that watch needs to, uh, you know, use the comment section. If this is actually true, do you agree with it? It's very, very clear that he is an American. And he's very proud of his uh, nation. And I love to see that. It really makes me feel like it's a normal thing to feel about your country. I feel the same about mine, Sweden. And I feel like I feel sometimes more at home talking about the United States of America than I do about Sweden. The rest of the segment, shall we? Oh my God. I'm sorry. I don't know what to do with this. The fire may be gone, but the heat still lingers. Straight from the Great Plains, Cyclone Country, the state of Iowa. It is I, Noah. So let's get into some statistics first, shall we? It is already well known that today the USA has the largest economy by nominal GDP out of any nation and the second largest purchasing power parity after China. The dollar is the most widely used currency in international transactions and is the world's reserve currency. Used by many other countries as an official and de facto currency, we are the world's largest importer and second largest exporter after China. Out of the world's 500 largest companies, over 120 are headquartered in the USA. We alone have about 40% of the world's billionaires and 30% of the world's millionaires. NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange are the largest stock exchanges in the world by market capitalization and trade volume. Some of our most profitable exports include petroleum products, electronics, machinery, aerospace, and defense equipment, and civilian passenger vehicles and medical and scientific equipment. We have the top most profitable companies and the largest commercial brands on earth that are world-renowned such as Apple, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and Tesla. We even invented the concept of venture capital. It's not enough for us Americans to just profit. We have to potentially profit. Our franchises have become widely globalized. In some of the most remote places on earth, you can find either a McDonald's or a KFC. And even the countries that either hate or restrict opening up an American franchise will often rip them off and capitalize off the idea. Whether or not an international lawsuit ensues or not is another Nothing question. Daigles. The point is they know the idea works. In addition to entrepreneurship, innovation, creativity, and invention has been a deep-rooted part of our history. We were even the first country to have an electronic grid provided to citizens as a utility in 1882. The Wright oh, brothers snap. invented the first sustained and controlled airplane in 1903, which pioneered and revolutionized the air travel industry. We love getting the world involved in our commerce. This is in large part thanks to our free market and capitalistic economic model in which market is run by the consumers. And basically thanks to our loose marketing laws, almost anything from the realm of public decency can be advertised. We go so far as advertise things like medicines, colleges, and yes, even the famous attorney settlement claim billboards and cheesy commercials are an American staple. Did you get hit by a car? Did you get mesotheliomia? Or did you get shot by a bear with mesotheliomia? Well, call right now be entitled to financial compensation. You gotta love those commercials. In any case, some people like to vacation in our nature. Did you get shot by a beaver? Zones, like our favorite animal correspondent. You know what? This time I believe it's just Caleb, take it away. Hey guys, so you know, I've been Geary Harlow on this channel for a while, but as we reach the home country, it's time to be real. And this is the real me. It actually is. <laughs> you couldn't tell before because I was wearing a hat in a disguise. <laughs> just like Noah, also hailing from the great state of Iowa. It is I, the American Caleb Seaton. <laughs> So, the USA is classified as one of the top 10 mega diverse nations on Earth. Over 600 species of reptiles and amphibians, more than 800 species of birds, over 430 species of mammal. The largest mammal within our country being the North American bison. Today, we have 63 national yeah. parks, 13 of which are UNESCO. Definitely one of the places I want to go to, one of the national parks. But I'm smart. I'm not going to go close to the bison. Because we all know what happens if you get too close to a bison. It will maul you to death. Is it mole? Maul? 
the World Heritage Sites, including the world's first national park and probably our most famous one, Yellowstone. The swampy parts of the Deep South is the reptile haven. You have alligators and turtles lurking everywhere. Alligator there turtle. There are even crossing signs with gators on them. In the Rockies, we have black and brown bears, bobcats, and mountain lions. Remember that time we saw a bear and what was it? The oh Mammoth my Lake. gosh, let me tell you this story. So Paul and I went on a camping trip up near Mammoth, California. One of the stupidest things we've ever done because we, we were like just warming up around the fire and I look behind Paul. It's a freaking bear like 15 feet away from you. We found a bear. Are you kidding me? That's a, a bear. That's a freaking bear. We almost uh, died. In the Alaskan North, we, we almost died. And polar bears, as well as narwhals and walruses. In the deserts, we have coyotes, javelinas, desert tortoises, and tarantulas. All along the west coast, you have harbor and elephant seals, giant Humboldt squids, porpoises, dolphins, and whales. Our tropical islands are home to some of the most amazing endemic bird and fish species, such as the Hawaiian honey creeper and the nene, and the state fish, the humuhumu nuku nuku apua'a. Did it. I do that right? You got it. Oh my god. <laughs> Nice. Of course, brings us to our national animal, the bald eagle. Majestic, powerful, and swift. This eagle is found usually by large bodies of water as they prefer fish. They build the largest nests out of any bird on earth. And yes, it is true, all American citizens, whether born or naturalized, are able to summon one at their will in times of emergency. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, why is he so loud? I should salute it. And speaking of emergencies, I have to get back to my wife Jillian because I just had a second baby. Say hi to Eden Ray. She enjoys making bubbles out of her mouth. Cheers, guys. Thank you, Caleb. Actually, fun fact, the whole reason I got involved with Geography Now originally was because I met Barb's at Caleb's wedding. And it's been great since then. Woo! How about that? Enough on that. Let's discuss the food. First, let's start off with the American Yeah, let's start. The, let's, let's all start about the food. Let's start the food. Part two. I'm sorry. That's going to be part two uh, because that's a big thing for me. I want to get in deep. We only did 24 minutes, but we're going to do the rest in part two. So if you did enjoy this, you got to show me. You got to show me that you did. And you do that by hitting the likes freaking button. That's the only thing I know. I would not know anything if you do enjoy the content or not with you hitting the like. This was part one. If you're excited for part two, let me know in the comment section. And thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out Geography Now and the video we watch, the links for both is available in the description. Go there and give them the support that they so much deserve. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ricky. You. Stay safe.